What's going on everyone? We're here with Arthur. He's lost a total of 21 kilos and completely transformed not only his body but his mind as well. Now we've been working together for almost a year now or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Almost Close a year now. Year. Yeah. We went through a growing phase and then a fat loss phase, then transitioned into a bit of a reversal slash maintenance period, then back down into another dieting phase. Now, you know, one of his goals was to get very lean for a photo shoot that he booked in in Korea. He's there right now, actually. He just wrapped up his second shoot. Thought I'd invite him to share his story with everyone because I think, you know, it might encourage people that are in a very similar place to hopefully make a change for themselves as well. So today we'll kind of walk you through our process, kind of dive into Arthur's thoughts, his experience. But before that, you know, Arthur, feel free to kind of introduce yourself to everyone. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Arthur, 37 years young, <laughs> I like to, like to put it. <laughs> the main role is to support people who are experiencing homelessness to look for a home. It's just a nine to five job, like a standard nine to five job. When I first approached Alex for discovery call. Yeah, like we had a discovery call. Like, you know, about book a year a time, ago. I have a mm. chat. Yeah. Discovered cult. Yeah. The reason why I reached out is because I resonated with, like, as Alex put out on social media, Instagram particularly, it's content that I could relate with. It also the thing that I was struggling with, which is having a regular nine to five job, trying to manage training and diet around my preferences and lifestyle. I've got previous experiences with other coaches prior to Alex. I think they were good at the things. They did. Their main clientele were competitors. I, I didn't want to be a competitor. So that was the mismatch there. I wasn't enjoying the process because I find it so hard to follow. Mm. And because it's so hard to follow, I start to not follow it. Yeah. And then there's no results, right? Yeah. Because if you don't follow the process, you don't get the results. It's not that they weren't good coaches. It's yeah, just that course. we're not a good match. Yeah, yeah. I would say that. I came across Alex through social media and I thought, hmm, this guy looks interesting. <laughs> Why not just you know, reach out and, and see what happens and find that the discovery calls really help. I think both of us, the coach and the client, uh, sort of understand each other and to gauge whether we are a good fit mm. for each other. Poor actually signing up some other coaches just go here you go fill in this form yeah the you know your standard fitness assessment form and then the second form will be your direct debit form yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get started and then you don't really speak to them until your first check-in call which you find quite odd because it's, yeah everything's online now but i just think that people respect is still quite important even though it's online like doing that first initial call prior to sign up just building that relationship, people. that trust and uh, yeah. experience, right? When, when I fill in the form, you have asked the additional questions. And then when the program and the first program and the first nutrition nutrition thing came out, everything in there, you have catered for what I said in the form and what you have asked for clarification in the discovery call. When I got that program, I was really happy. It's like, oh, this is actually for me. And this is actually what I can see myself enjoy doing. Mm. Um, because sometimes you get a program like, oh, I, <laughs> I don't really like that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But like, I was really excited from the start because if I can see myself doing that and whatever is in there, actually looks delicious. Mm, mm. <laughs> what were some of the meals that you enjoyed uh, eating from the meal plans that I've given you? I haven't had this for a while because yeah. we've been cutting for a while. But my favorite was the, the mince with the taco mix and mm. rice. That was good. Yes. As I said, I'm excited to transition you back into a growing phase. I know we've been eating quite low calories just because of the goals that you've held yourself to. I mean, the photos that you submitted when you were in the gym, they're definitely one of the leanest ones we've had. Not many people are as willing mm. to kind of go through this for such a long period of time. Also keep in mind where we did start from at the end of that bulk, like we were very, very thick, very chunky. Your face, like you look like a completely different person. You look so much younger now and you look a lot healthier too. I'm sure you feel yeah. healthier. You, your breathing's probably better too. Previously, you're just struggling with walking, like you know, the simple things like yeah. that. Yeah. It's things that you take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis, right? It makes a yeah. huge difference. When you first started, when you were a little bit heavier, in comparison to maybe, let's say, 
halfway through the cut. How has that impacted like work productivity? Did you feel as though you're more focused or less sluggish? That process taught me in terms of mindset, which I find it's applicable to me outside of training, is that risk taking nature mm. and following through with the plan and be patient. Mm. Don't expect things to happen like overnight. I think that helped me in sort of like, I would say my career progression as well, because I, I'm looking to go towards more of like a management role at work. And with that, I need to step out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. do things like accept more roles and responsibilities, which means doing things that I'm not comfortable with, which I initially thought like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough mm. to do X, Y, Z. I don't feel like I have the skills to do X, Y, Z. But thankfully, my manager is as supportive as Alex at work. <laughs> like, they could see that there's like, no, um, Arthur, I think you can do it. Um, you have it in you. Why don't you just give it a go? It's the same thing, you know, that same mindset, that same process. Mm. Take the risk, be confident in yourself your abilities you may have noticed but i'm not always really confident with myself yes i remember yeah. that from the when we first started confidence was a yeah thing that you did struggle with and i'm so glad to i think i got better towards the end but like, yeah. especially when during the earlier times when i was a bit needy <laughs> that's <laughs> Thanks okay for coping with that i understand that when people are asking a lot of questions or quote-unquote needy it's because you just need clarification reassurance and direction that's all you know before i left melvin yeah i remember you told me regardless of what happens yeah. this time around i'm better than last time around yeah, much better yeah when i went into the shoot yeah. there's this thought that's running in my head it says that i didn't work hard enough I would, i'm still not good enough but then it reminded me of what you told me it really helped put me in a better mindset you know it's, it's just like you always go in into something thinking that you could have done more yeah exactly and mm. that's so normal right i mean especially with mm. people like us we're always trying to do better always trying to do more and nothing will ever be good enough the most difficult person to impress is ourselves right yeah and you will always feel like this was a little bit off or you might be a little bit more watery than you anticipated. But at the same time, if you look at the photos in comparative to the first shoot that you did, significant changes, would you agree? Yes. Yeah. During the shoot, how did you feel? After those like self-doubt thoughts mm -hmm. are all gone, I actually felt comfortable and okay. confident nice. with myself. I think I'm able to express myself yeah more confidently yeah. and also i wasn't yeah. confident back then yeah you had a lot of <laughs> there was a few doubts right and that's okay like i've yeah. been in your shoes so i know what it's like and i just tell you what i wish i was told when i was in your position and for me like i really enjoy the whole service delivery part of the business just seeing people happy seeing them feel confident you know building communities and people even training with each other like, that's so cool, and I would love to do more of that. See you grow as an individual, really believe in yourself. Yeah. You know, going to the gym, flexing, like, really feeling good about your body. Yeah. That really helps with, career, like, things like the way people treat you, the way people speak to you. Mm. You know, you come in with a lot more assertiveness, and you're yes. able to take these leadership roles, right? Because mm. that's the goal, essentially, for what I do. Without the gym, I would not be where I am today. And I really want people to be able to create the life and life quality that they thought was only a dream. It's kind of like going to the gym, right? You put in the work, you get the results. And it's the same thing in life. You can't expect things to happen if you're just not taking control. And nothing's going to happen if you don't believe in yourself, which really comes down to self-confidence. And it's crazy because it's just your body, right? But it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm in our overall life quality. The mindset, the values, the behavior, it's like I said, it's transferable. And you don't even notice it, but it, it just, just flows out to everything else in life. It, it just happens. And I think for everyone out there who's listening, I think it's, especially when you have a lot of self-doubt, the hardest part is to take that first step. What I learned is if you don't take that first step, nothing will happen. And it's scary. You know, like, you just, yeah, it's scary. It, yeah, it's very scary. I mean, I've worked with a lot of coaches and mentors in the past, and especially with the price tag, right? Like these things are, they can cost, but 
just like anything, you know, you have to be willing to make that investment. I've spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on coaches and mentors myself. And sometimes, unfortunately, they don't work out. They don't work out the way you hope for it to be. And it's unfortunate. But life is really all about being able to get back up and give it another shot, right? Mm. Like, if you keep trying, you, you won't, you can't fail, right? But the moment you give up or decide to do nothing, that's when nothing grows. When you first started talking, you were very timid, very shy. Now in the group calls, you, you love to speak, you love to lead. Just seeing your personality and char your character change has been really, really cool. And I'm very lucky and I'm glad that you decided to have me take you there. I feel like just being able to continue to build this community is so rewarding and seeing everybody grow and change. It's, it's sick. Another question I'd like to ask, man, is just overall, how has this impacted other areas of your life? So not just training and the eating, but more so, you know, work, friendships, relationships, you know, being in a calorie deficit for a long time and being quite restricted with food just for now, you know, you've still managed to find ways to spend time with friends and family, right? Yeah, it didn't really impact me because I, I understand that like most people find that uh, everything that's social revolves around food. Yes. But um, I sort of work around that. So I hang out with my friends doing stuff that doesn't involve food. Mm. So, like we will go out for a movie. You know, what we'll do is like we'll plan the movie for after lunch or after dinner. So mm. if they want, they could go by themselves and have lunch or dinner and then I'll meet them for a movie. Um, or we could go for concerts, for example, which doesn't involve eating, but right? mm. they can do, they can drink and snack whatever they want, but I don't have to because yeah. it's not like something that everyone has to do that eating and drinking. But if we do go out celebrate someone's birthday, for example, I will try to eat as close to as possible to what's in the meal plan. Yeah. Then just um, not have the cake. Just making yeah. smarter yeah. decisions, right? And yeah. You know, a lot of people, when they fall off these meal plans and stuff, they feel a little bit guilty. Again, with your situation, because we were prepping for a shoot, which not many people do, you'll notice if you do go back into another dieting phase or a slight surplus where you're eating a little bit more, we're going to be a lot more flexible, right? In the situations where you would like to, you know, really focus on calorie management and just pushing and saving the calories for those meals. So that way, you know, you're still on track, you don't feel bad, you don't feel guilty, and you're still making progress whilst kind of having that balance. Because especially if you're traveling, you know, I'm sure, I think last time, you know, last time you were in Korea, after the photo shoot, you ate whatever you want, essentially, after that shoot, right? Yeah. You just celebrated with food, but you didn't really fall back either, right? Like you didn't gain that much weight coming back. We still had to transition back into another dieting phase, but you know, you had your fun, you ate, you traveled, you had a good time, and then we just cleaned it up a little bit. And even that process for you wasn't very vigorous from memory. I know there's been some periods where energy started to dip because our food was so low, but yeah. then just carb cycling, right? Understanding how your body worked, how you felt at those periods and methods that we can implement to regulate your energy throughout the week. So that way it doesn't impact your work as well. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we wrap things up? Just to recap what you said, yeah, take the first step. And you said like, you know, it doesn't always work out because life's not straightforward. Mm -hmm. But I think with failure, you learn from it. Mm. Like you said, if you don't do anything at all, nothing will change. Yeah. If you do something, if you succeed, good. If you do something and it fails, you, you learn. learn from it. Yeah. Um, it's not, you, you don't lose anything. People always see failure as like, oh, it's the end of the world. Yeah. But I think doing nothing is the end of the yeah. world. Yeah. Like losing, <laughs> losing is a choice. It's a perspective, right? Let's say you work with a coach and it just doesn't work out. You could decide that, hey, I lost time and I lost money. Or you can think, hey, I actually learned a lot of lessons. And maybe these are things that I shouldn't do. Because my first two coaches, they were uneducated, <laughs> to say the least, <laughs> you know, without saying too many things, they were very uneducated. And when I signed up to my first coach, I had like maybe $5,000 in my bank account. And I had, it was like two, three K, but I wanted, I was so desperate for change. I'm like, if I have to sell my car, I will. And that whole experience was like, geez, <laughs> it was not that smooth. <laughs> yeah. But you learned from it. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And if I decided to give up, then I would not be where I am today like that. Correct. 
And, you know, those experiences has allowed me to think, hey, these are the things that I enjoyed. So I need to make sure that I do these things with my clientele, right? Making sure that you have choices and options was very important because I didn't. I was eating the same meals for the six, seven months. The smell of salmon made me want to throw up, but I couldn't change it, you know, because I wasn't allowed to. So I wanted to make sure that you guys didn't experience the same thing. Tomorrow, about tomorrow. Yes. I was about to speak to you about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I didn't do the daily check-in. That's fine. That's <laughs> like fine. I always do. You're on holiday. Um, so that's, I'm yeah. sorry that you have no doubt. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> For the next three weeks. No. I mean, but essentially. I promise that I'll get back to it when I get back to Melbourne. No stress, man. No stress. All right. This is the game plan. This is what we'll do. I was going to say I'm happy to redesign the program to accommodate for your facility. But if you're only there for a couple more days, just continue as is. When you yeah, that's still fine. Yeah. yeah. When you go to Malaysia, let me know if you're limited to equipment and what we can redesign. In terms of food, just eye it out. You know, I was in the States for th three weeks. Yeah. You, you might gain one to three kilos per week. No biggie. Mm. We'll just maybe clean up when you get back. Try not to yeah. overspill too much because that means we have to do another dining phase when you're back to clean things up. And I don't want you to have to go through that again just for a little while. Thank you again. We won't check in tomorrow. That's the game plan for now. We'll check in next week just to kind of see where you're at. It's always just to keep tabs, yeah. see if you're okay mm -hmm. mentally and physically, yeah. see how you're going. I find that it really helps. I wish mm -hmm. my coaches did that. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave it at that and I'll see you next week. You enjoy your holiday. Don't eat too much fried chicken, but have a little sure. bit. Speak to you soon, man. Take care. Thank you again, right. Arthur. Thanks, sir.